So today I'm putting on my mentoring hat. I'm going to teach you skills to take away right away and use in your trading. This is more of a, a book with my wearing my coaching hat. So here we go. Just a little bit of coaching to start. Three pillars of trading success. We believe that we need the analysis, the strategy, and the coaching and accountability in order to be successful. One without the other is like climbing up a mountain without climbing gear. Like when we when we learn analysis, and that's where the Elite Wave comes in. That provides the context for the top-down approach, the context for the for the market, and then you have the strategy. So the strategy enables you to pull the trigger. But I've always used Elliott Wave analysis. It's been my crystal ball. I, I don't say that too often anymore, but I used to say it an awful lot more. I don't know why I don't say it anymore, because it really is my crystal ball for looking at the markets. And now I can honestly tell you that when I look at a market and I, and I don't see the wave counts or I don't visualize the wave counts, then I'm well, I do, so I'm not lost. I mean, that's what I, that's what I do. So I hope that I can share some of my enthusiasm with you and, again, show you some, some uh, good skills to take away. Coaching and accountability, just a little note on that. If you are in a, if you have a trading buddy and you have a like-minded strategy that you've learned together, go for it. Work with that person. Uh, to share trades, and it's really important to be accountable to someone or to be accountable to a group. And we certainly have that accountability group, and and our traders are just sharing their trades all day long. Uh, they've learned, and and now they're just sharing their trades, and everybody's benefiting from it. And that's really the joy that I get to see after teaching students to see them trading, making money, being happy, and living a life that they want to live. So analysis. We, um, we use Elliott Wave Analysis and now Harmonic. So thank you to Robert Prechter and Scott Carney, Frost and Prechter and Scott Carney for providing the, um, you know, the, the background, the science behind these two masters, Elliott and Harmonic Trading. And what I've done is I've taken the works and I've taken the best and I've combined it with Fibonacci and with our strategy, which is the wavy tunnel, which is an Elliott wave map strategy. So again, we look at Elliott and harmonics combined in order to have the market context and increase the likelihood of successful trades. I'm going to show you an example on how, of exactly how we do that. The strategy needs to be effective because I am a strong believer in that you, you need a trade plan. You, you have to put a trade plan in place to let you know where you're triggering the trade, where you're exiting the trade, and the exits include the, and the uh, stop loss level and the profit target or profit targets. So that's really key. That's the key part of a trade plan. Very, very important to do that. So the strategy that we use is called the wavy tunnel. You may have a different strategy. You may use support and resistance. You may use you, you may use Fibonacci. You may use moving averages. Whatever you use is fine. Just follow it and keep following it. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what I always like to say. If it is broke, well, then you need to find something else. And maybe you'll be interested in what I have to say today. So the key is to remove the emotions because as traders, we can get very emotional, and trading can be a roller coaster ride, or it can be, you know, a stable thing where you're in the market. You know that we accept you. Yeah, you have to take losses as well as make profits, and as long as you accept that, then and, and that's the way it is. Then fine, trading goes on, and it's not. Um, gee, I lost today. What am I doing? It's it's more about being accountable and understanding what your system provides in terms of risk, reward, and profit, and then dealing with it, taking responsibility, and that's where the accountability comes in, which is here and the coaching. All right, Ralph Nelson Elliott studied various market indices over a 75-year period in the 1930s when he was bedridden. And he poured over thousands and thousands of stock market charts. And would you believe it, he, they, there weren't any computers back then. And in studying all of these charts, he discovered that the markets traded in repetitive cycles that reflected the emotions of investors. 
these cycles are what we follow today. Those are the patterns that we look for. Another guy, Leonardo Fibonacci, the Italian mathematician, developed or discovered the Fibonacci sequence of numbers, which is right here. And this sequence of numbers, where you add one to the next to get the third, etc., all the way up, is very, very powerful. Because when you divide one by the other, a smaller number by the next bigger number, for example, you get 0.618. And when you take the inverse of that, either 1 divided by 0.618 or take 34 divided by 21, you get 1.618. So with the Fibonacci sequence, and let me just see if I can get a, um, yeah, okay. So with the Fibonacci sequence, whenever you're dividing a smaller number by the next or a smaller number by the next two or the next three, you're getting a retracement ratio. And I'm sure you're all familiar with retracement ratios. The key ones are 38.2, 50%, 61.8, and there are others. And whenever you're going backwards, you're getting, you're getting an extension ratio. So 1.618, 1, 1 for example, 2.618. And these retracement and extension ratios are what we use with Elliott to project the moves. So when we enter a position, we know exactly where we, we have to, we do a projection and we, you know, figure out where we think it's going based on these Fibonacci ratios. And I'm just... I have to get rid of the little highlighter here to change the page. So Fibonacci is going to play a big role when we talk about Elliott and harmonics. And, and the numbers, the ratios that are used in both sciences are different. They're not the same. So it pays to be a little mathematically inclined, but I have students who are not, and they just love the visual, the visual nature of, of looking at the charts and seeing the wave patterns. And this is the eight-wave cycle. It looks daunting, but I actually love this because you can just learn so much from this eight-wave cycle. You count five waves up for the trend move and a three-wave correction. And when you go down to the smaller time frames, you're gonna, you might be in a wave one on a weekly chart, but you might see a five-wave sequence on an hourly chart, for example. But on the weekly chart, you'll just see, you'll just see a line for example. So we do have to go down to the smaller time frames to see the subwaves. And that's the beauty of Elliott, that the subwaves are the same patterns that you see on any time frame. So once you learn these patterns, it really doesn't matter if you're a day trader or a swing trader or, or a position taker, because you're going to see the same patterns on every single time frame in every single market. So you can trade stocks, you can trade forex, you can trade futures. It doesn't matter. You're gonna, as long as you learn the theory and as long as you learn the strategy that goes with the theory, then that's that's fine. You're in game. You're, yeah. So on the left we have we call a motive wave or an impulse wave, a five wave sequence, and on the right we have the three wave correction. And notice the chart patterns that are here. You're familiar with head and shoulders patterns. Well, there are head and shoulders patterns at every single peak in this eight-wave cycle. Do you see the, the uh, head and shoulders patterns? So that's really neat. In fact, that was such a big aha moment for me many, many, many years ago when I was able to equate the Elliott Wave patterns with the tech, classical technical analysis chart patterns that I picked up in, oh, probably Murphy's book many, many years ago. Or when I took a course, I took a basic um, technical analysis course in New York when I was living in New York working for a bank in, um, in the 1980s. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So I'm going to go on because we're going to talk a little bit more about this anyway. And I have to get moving because I have a lot to share. So... Well, I'll go back up. This picture is its a new paradigm, a different way of looking at the same picture. And you can see either you know, a Mexican guitar player serenading this girl, or you see an elderly couple, depending on how you look at this picture. 
the point is that I hope to share something with a new paradigm with you today so that you wear a new pair of lenses and see the markets in a different light. So let's just talk about the trader's market in a bit more detail. Um, three rules of Elliott that cannot be broken. So whenever you see a five wave sequence, wave four doesn't go below the top of wave one, wave two doesn't go below the start of wave one, and wave three is not the shortest wave. Not so important because it's fine, but I just wanted to get that out there in case you don't know those three rules because now when we talk about three different trades that you can look for, it helps to keep those rules in mind. So trade number one is, and I keep going to the cursor here to get the spotlight. Okay, trade number one is to buy before the wave three move. So when you see your eight wave cycle followed five waves followed by three waves, that's the eight wave cycle. On whatever time frame you're trading, you can expect a similar move in the trend direction. So that's the trade number one. Buy after an eight wave cycle if the wave one is up. You might not be a consummate wave counter, but if the first if you're counting five waves up or five waves down and three waves back, you're going to look for some kind of candlestick pattern, some kind of channeling support. It's, in Elliott, we, ch we channel. We, we channel because what we find is the five wave sequences fall within a channel. So you can get a lot. You can get moving average support here. You can get channel support. You can get candlestick support, reversal candlestick patterns. So that's that's one of the best uh, setups, your, your trade number one. Trade number two is after we had a mega impulsive move in a wave three, because a wave three is a strong trend, and that's basically where you can throw darts and you're not going to miss. Like you're going to hit the, the bullseye because the wave three keeps going, and the corrections during the wave three are very shallow. So you can't really lose that much during a powerful wave three. Then the market corrects for a wave four, and there is one more move up for a wave five, as long as the wave four does not go below the top of the wave one. And there is an exception to that, and the exception is an ending diagonal, um, which is a wedge formation. An ending diagonal has overlap. It's, it's another, it's a pattern, and it's an Elliott wave pattern too. So you would be buying here for the next move up. And again, you look for your moving average support, your trend line support, your, your Fibonacci retracement level. Okay, very important. And we're going to look at a few examples shortly. And your candlestick reversal patterns. Okay, your third trade using the Elliott Wave 8-wave cycle is to sell for the Wave C. This is a three-wave move. And an ABC is very similar in personality to a wave one, two, three. So you really don't need to be a consummate wave counter to see this. And it doesn't really matter if you have an eight wave cycle, five waves down, three waves up. Again, look for that, look for that um, confirmation to sell for a wave C. There's another confirmation that you can use, and that's a one, two, three reversal pattern on a smaller time frame to get into the wave C move. Okay, a one, two, three reversal pattern. Other than that, reversal candlestick analysis, channel, resistance, and moving average resistance. So that's your eight wave cycle and just picture those those three types of trades that you can start to look for. And here's an example from, this is a Euro Aussie chart, 15 minute chart. So this just illustrates what I just went over. This is just meant for illustration purposes. We have five waves down, followed by a three wave correction. And here's the channel that I talked about. So nor typically when we break above a channel, after we've completed a five wave sequence, we're already into the correction. So this is how we're labeling it the corrective sequence. This is your eight wave cycle and then at this point, this is beautiful, I don't have the channel resistance lines here, but we have 
we have a beautiful one, two, three pattern here. And the one, two, three pattern is as follows. You label this a point one. And I need to get a different color here. You label this a point one, okay, at the high of the visit the, the high price of point two when the market trades lower, and then you get this retracement for a point three, and then this is where you're selling as soon as we break down through this level. That's for a confirmed sell. If you don't have anything else up here, like major resistance or major Fibonacci uh, retracement levels or a harmonic pattern that coincides with this zone. I'm going to show you an example which where you don't have to use a one, two, three reversal necessarily, or you can anyway, putting it all together with harmonics, Elliott projections, and um, Fibonacci. So that's that's one example. I'm trying I'm speaking fast because I don't have that much time here. Here's the second example. This is Twitter. And let me erase this and just start all over again. Okay, perfect. Here's Twitter. We have the eight wave eight wave cycle. One, two, three, four, five, A, B, C. And again, you're channeling, and then we break out, and you, you, you're in the middle of your corrective sequence. So we talked about the trade, taking the trade on the B wave. We talked about taking the trade on the wave two and taking the wave four trade. These are the three trades. I didn't show you them on the other chart, but that's what you're looking for. And the psychology involved with that is as follows. You, you need to... By, you need to sell on strengths, basically. And our wavy tunnel system really helps you with that, with the bungee and the semaphores. You need to sell on strengths. That's your mental mindset when you're selling a wave two. Or you wait for a one, two, three reversal. Now, that would have been kind of hard here with this gap. Okay? This, this would have been fine. We had a beautiful one, two, three pattern. This you would have missed if you didn't get into it up here. Okay? You would have missed it at this level. But with this wave four, that was a nice entry. With this uh, B wave, the one, two, three on this time frame couldn't, didn't have one. We have reversal candlestick patterns here, and we have a Fibonacci support level. I didn't get into drawing, in, drawing the Fibonaccis here. Okay. I just wanted to mainly show you the eight wave cycle and highlight the different trades that you could take that you could look for and you need of course to learn more about it. Now let's get into a little bit more about the harmonics and I'm going to show you the, the example and then look at a few live markets. So the chart is the roadmap. I'm a, I love visuals. I love, that's, I just love visuals. Pattern recognition offers high probability opportunities. So when I worked at the bank, I actually worked at J.P. Morgan in the days for 15 years. I was a currency trader for them. And I can remember even my boss, who was just a brilliant, brilliant um, forward trader and swaps trader and just interest rate guy, who would post pitch patterns on his walls because he wanted to trade spot and just patterns. And I just... I observed it and I just learned from it. These were in my early days. And then, of course, we hired a technical analyst, a technician off the Chicago Board of Trade who taught us elite wave analysis and taught us about pivot points and taught us about support and resistance and all that good stuff. So I've always been interested in the pattern recognition stuff from the early days. We're talking 30 years. And I only used Elliott Wave Analysis and Fibonacci until about three years ago I started incorporating harmonics because I thought, well, let's see if it makes sense. And my gosh, it makes so much sense when you combine. Many traders know one and not the other, and when you combine it, the three of these things, whoa. They're all based on ratio and proportion, and when each one of you is telling you the same thing from a different angle, how powerful is that? So when you're trying to find the turning point, the end of a move, the wave, the wave two, the wave four, the wave B, as we described in the eight wave cycle, and you can add a harmonic pattern to it and an Elliott wave 
projection or retracement. That is very cool. The harmonic nomenclature is different from the Elliott Wave nomenclature. We're talking X, A, B, C, D in harmonics versus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, A, B, C in Elliott. So don't get confused with the labeling because an A, B, C in Elliott isn't the same as an A, B, C in harmonics. So I like roadmaps. I like using GPS, elite wave analysis combined with harmonic patterns. That's my roadmap and my GPS. So now let's look at an example. This is the little case study that I did, and then we'll. This is the Dollar Canada, and then uh, then we'll we'll look at see what Dollar Canada is doing currently. So the question is how to find the target. We this is the background. This is a, a weekly. We have this move down. This is a corrective move. There's a lot. There's too much on the chart here. I apologize. I could have gotten rid of these wave counts. So just don't focus on the wave counts for now. Just focus on this is a wave three. This is a wave four. And we're looking for a target. And this is actually something, of course, that we did uh, from this point on. We were buying it. Of course, we were because we're, we're looking at the, the stuff every single day and projecting the move. And we did pretty well on projecting, uh, projecting this move up here. And I'll show you how we did it. So wave three followed by a wave four leads to an impulsive move up. Okay? Now, this wave count shows a wave one, two, three, four, five. It shows that it's not done yet, that, we're, that we need to correct down, which we've been doing. This chart was taken a few weeks ago. We've been correcting down, and then we need to move up again. So that's what this chart is showing. But after a big wave three like this on a weekly chart, you want it, you don't want to stay in it unless you're trading weeklies for this corrective move down. You want to get out at the end of the wave three. So that's what I'm going to show you. Fibonacci, Elliott Waves, and Harmonics. So the, just remember, this was the wave three to the wave four. You take your handy dandy Fibonacci tool and you run it and you just take an extension and and it will give you a certain number of targets. So we you, you can target starting from 127.2 up to 161.8 even up to 200 percent. The key is that you want to focus in on the key Fibonacci le projection levels and wave three actually hit the 161 point uh, eight percent target at 134.02 and then that was the top. It went a little higher and that was the top. So this was one projection and when we get, when we do the Elliott projection and the harmonics projection, we call that the, um, we call that the um, convergence zone. I'm speaking very fast and I could speak much slower because I do have time. My gosh, I have another 20 minutes, so I'm going to slow down a little bit. All right. Um, so this is a picture of the daily Dollar Canada chart, and let me explain this. Okay. This is the wave four, right? The black wave four, and you remember the wave one in red circle, two in red circle three in red circle. That was our target. In Elliott Wave Analysis, the way we project the wave three is we project wave three versus wave one. Okay, There are certain projections. So we use our Fibonacci tool and we run it. It's a the three-point tool and we go from the start of wave one to the end of the wave one to the end of the wave two and then we project the wave three target. So this wave three target ended at 200% times the wave one at 134.10. So we would have a bunch of targets along the way, 161.8 times wave one, 127.2 times wave one, and even 100% times wave one. So when you use your, run your Fibonacci tool, you're just interested in finding out where the market will congregate at certain Fibonacci levels. 
because these levels are followed by everybody. They'll, everybody uses Fibonacci, maybe not everybody, but most people do. And it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy that we are going to at least bounce off of these levels. Fibonacci is very powerful. So we're going to bounce off of these levels. And I don't have the levels coming down. I, I did this fairly quickly, which would show you perhaps we bounced off these levels at, more, at other significant points along the way. And I realize this is after the fact. Okay, so you have to, this is after the fact, but we were, we were projecting these along the way, and we would be very interested in a wave three at 161.8% and on up, because wave threes typically travel 161.8% times the wave one, and it's actually considered a, an extended move once we go beyond that. But 161.8 is not considered extended at all. So 261.8% is extended. 200% is extended, but not 161.8%. Now I'm going to show you one other way to measure wave 5. And this is just a little slide to, to show you. If this is a five-wave sequence, wave 5 is a multiple of wave 1 or the difference between the start of wave 1 and the end of wave 3. Okay. Wave 5 targets when wave 3 is extended, okay, and, when, and an extended wave 3 means that it's greater than 161.8% times wave 1. These are the targets. One times wave 1, which is equality. That means that the length of the wave 5 is exactly the same as the length of the wave 1. And then 0.618 times wave 1, 1.618 times wave 1. And then this last one, 0.618 times wave 1 to wave 3. Okay. Now I'm going to show you, we counted this out for the wave 3. And I'm just getting a little pencil here again. Okay, I'll use this. And red is the biggest time frame, and then we move down for the subways, we go to orange. We use the color coding system based on the rainbow, Roy G. Biv. So red, orange, and yellow are the same. Red, orange, yellow green, blue, indigo, violet. So, and our indigo is magenta and our violet is black. So we're into the red, orange, and green right now. So we have waves one, two, three, four, five. And wave five is an extended wave. It's an ending diagonal. So when you measure waves point, from point zero to the end of wave three, you get that wave 5 ended at exactly 61.8% times this distance. So it was a, you know, it landed right on the projection for the wave 5. Now, I don't know if that was clear or not. Uh, now, let me. And the next slide will show you it's wave 5, and it's the wave 5 in orange. That's why these boxes are in orange, versus the start of wave 1 to the end of wave 3. And that target at 61.8% brought us to 134.64. So right now we're just coming up with some targets. We looked at the Fibonacci target. We looked at a wave 3 projection target of the wave 1 this piece here, and now we're just looking at, we're going to look at harmonics now. So in our Elite Wave Ultimate course, this is one of our trade plans, and the this is an end of the trend picture, waves 3, 4, 5 with embedded harmonic extension, it says. So this is exactly the pattern that we're looking at now in the Canadian dollar on that weekly, wave 3, 4, 5. So this is an X, A, B, C, D 
the D would be the final point, uh, final projection for this wave 5 move. All right, that's the picture. Now let's go and look at the actual pattern that we were following, and it's, it's called the crab pattern. Not important to look at all of these Fibonacci ratios, it's just confusing, but this is what the pattern looks like, and this is exactly the Fibonacci ratios that you're looking at for, but we simplify it in, in, our pro, in our course, in our program. We have basically three bullet points in the convergence zone, and that's what we look for, and that's it. Like this, this can get, if you're a mathematician or if you really like numbers, you're really going to get into this, but um, I'm just showing this to you for the pattern more than anything else. Now, this is the weekly X, A, B, C, D. I hope you can see my mouse anyway. So X, A, B, C, D. And this is the convergence zone for the point D, which, which we projected you know, early on. And this gave us a range of 133.78 to 134.79. So that's a fairly wide range but it, for a target, but it's really not when you're looking at the, ex, the extended move that the dollar Canada had. It was a huge, huge move, right? So now let's put it all together. And the question that I asked early, ha, earlier, how to find the target, like when you, when you study the three sciences, or analysis techniques, I call them sciences, and you're looking to find the target, it, it, uh, it's natural to use the three to know how to do it, we teach you how to do it, and to look for that end of the move in the convergence zone or in the target zone. So that means that when you buy the Dollar Canada down here, you don't take your profits too soon. That means that you buy and you might have three different levels that you're selling at, or you bu might buy again on every single correction that we have going up. I mean, it just trains the brain, and it's, it's a mindset. It makes it easier for you to fathom a big move like this. Actually, this was a huge move, right? Okay, so the, this is a summary of the targets. The Fibonacci gave us the 134.02, the Elliott Waves, gave us the 134.62 and the 134.10, and the harmonics gave us the range of between 133.80 and 134.80. So when we get to this target, there's no questioning ourselves, well, what if it's going to go higher? What about this? I mean, we're going to look for those reversal candles, or we're going to set an order and leave a wide stop. I mean, this is actually what we did was we followed it every single day. and many of our students in our trading room have followed it during the trading day as well and just took the trades on smaller time frames if they were day trading for example because you can you can take this trade on a weekly on a daily on a four hour on an hourly on a five minute on a one minute I mean you can but you need the you need the instruction you need the mindset that we're that that's the target zone so that was my case study for you today. And now let's have a look at the Dollar Canada and actually see what happened. And I'm going to show you oil too. And because the Dollar Canada and oil are very well correlated. So I'm just I'm just going to show you. I just prepared some Dollar Canada. These aren't live. Sorry. I mean, I could show you my live charts, but I just took screenshots of them um, basically before the session so I could label it and stuff. Okay, so this is the, and let me just, I, I have my uh, chart up here, let me just, yeah, okay. So this is the weekly Dollar Canada, and the, so that, that's what happened. I mean, the market has been coming down from that peak, okay? Mm -hmm. And as I said, we were looking, our wave count suggests that we are going to come down for a wave four, find a bottom, and then go up again because our wave count suggests that we haven't completed the entire cycle yet. Um, this is the daily. 
let me just see if the, if this is really the daily. Hold on, let me just look at my charts. Something tells me that. I mean, I know it's the daily. I just want to make sure that it's updated. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Okay, good. Um, so this correction here, this four-hour correction, is is a complex correction. We're labeling it a WXY. So we're in the Y wave, and we're in the Y wave. And we're going to go down the time frames to see if this A wave is nearly complete, and if we're ready to use our Fibonacci tool on the entire move down and look for a B wave correction back up. So that's the goal here. We want to see if, if the current wave is almost over, and the only way we can see that is to go down the time frames. That's why we're doing this top-down approach. So even though we're expecting it to go lower, once this A wave completes, then we're going to have a nice little retracement. So this is the four-hour chart. This is a W, X, and now we're in the A wave. And we have done five, it looks like we've done five waves down. So we're close to completing this A wave on this four-hour chart. And we'll look at the hourly chart too. Maybe we should just look at the hourly chart. Yeah. So here's the hourly chart. One, two, three, four, five, and we may have completed the five wave sequence and what we would next what we would do next is run our fibonacci on the entire five wave sequence okay so we would run our fibonacci on the entire five wave sequence to see what the potential b wave retracement would be and 38.2% is the most likely target 12928 Okay, and then 50% is the next, 129 and a half. Now, what I, what I do suggest is to, for confirmation, is to go, you know, to go down the time frames, go down to the even smaller time frames, and look, you can look for a 1, 2, 3 reversal on a smaller time frame. I don't have the support and resistance points up here, the pivot points, that's really important to look at. The... Um, trend lines, channels, I mean, that's always good to do along with this. And I, I haven't looked for a harmonic pattern yet in this, okay? Because I just, we, we've been, we, we just came down, we came down today to this level. So I'm not, I haven't looked, I, I haven't looked for a harmonic pattern, but I'm going to do my analysis on this um, later to see if we are bottoming out. And we have an analyst, Juan, he's our elite wave strategist. He actually does these wave counts every single day on many different markets. And he provides a daily video, okay? So this is what we're expecting. Now let's look at oil. Bottom line is we're, we're close to a bottom here for, for a correction. Now we're going to look at oil. Oh, and one more point. After five waves, we expect a three-wave correction. And there's your eight-wave cycle. And then we would expect another move down in the dollar Canada. Okay. Weekly oil. So what's interesting, I put up oil because oil and the dollar Canada are highly correlated. Oh, I'm almost out of time. Oh, my gosh. All right. So let's just scroll down, and we're basically seeing the same thing for oil that we expect. Well, actually, we're almost at the end of this wave one, and we expect a correction in the wave two. Okay, we're 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 a little bit bearish on oil, looking for a move down to the previous wave three. Okay, but we do expect us to move up first, and. This is also the end of a five-wave cycle, so we would expect prices to turn around and move up. And this is the chart of the weekly dollar Canada versus an inverted U.S. oil. So when you're trading dollar Canada or you're oil, trading oil, look at the other market because they are highly co correlated. 
this is oil inverted and this is the US dollar Canada so you can see that they're moving in sync and they don't move in sync on a daily basis necessarily but over time they move in sync so if you want to be prepared for when one is moving and the other isn't because it will likely catch up so that's all I, oh okay that's all I wanted to say with the analysis and with the live markets if you are interested in in getting daily wave counts and having your personal LA wave analyst and strategist by your side like I did at the bank and like I did for many many years and now I do again with Juan then sign up at elliewavedesk.com it's a great little service and this is what you get you get daily analysis a daily video on the euro the pound the Aussie the dollar yen the dollar Canada the New Zealand dollar the S&P gold oil and the Dow and then you also get a weekly video uh, on the weekend that you can look at more carefully and really plan out your trades for the coming week. And let me tell you that I also look at a lot of the crosses. And when you look at the, the pound and the Aussie, for example, against the US dollar, you can surmise what's going to happen with the cross. If the pound is you know, going a certain way and the Aussie is a little weaker, whatever, then you can make judgments about what the crosses will do because I know probably many of you look at the crosses too um, but we decided to just and analyze the US dollar pairs and then we we talk about the crosses in our trading rooms etc so this is a start for you to get to know us a little bit elitewavedesk.com